Welcome back. In, I'd say 1993, I found myself in a Toyota factory in Japan, watching the first robots work alongside humans to build cars. I thought I was in a scene of the Jetsons, and it definitely felt to me like a futuristic TV show. But 30 years later, crazy to say it, here we are. And our next guest is pushing what I saw all that time ago into our reality every single day. Matthew Chang is the founder and CEO of Chang Industrial. And he is a futurist as a human. He's an engineering professional, but he has created a futuristic company and they are doing everything in their power to create tomorrow, today. Matthew, thank you for coming to Good Day. And I love the conversation around what's coming and the world of engineering, the way you approach it by really bringing, bringing tomorrow to life. So tell us a little bit about your background. How how did you get here? Well, hey, Lauren, and it's good to be here. Um, yeah, I'm, I followed a traditional engineering path. Um, my first plan was to join the Navy, and I went to Georgia Tech on a Navy ROTC scholarship. And while I was there, they, they downsized the program, and I was on the wrong side of the downsizing. Uh, that pushed me into a pure professional engineering path where uh, I went... Um, graduated from college, uh, apprenticed as an engineer, and then got licensed as a professional engineer. Um, and I took that show on the road. I was the young engineer will travel at a globally expanding company. So I had the good fortune of opening up engineering offices across Asia in Shanghai, Singapore, and Kuala Lumpur. And, um, and then when I got to do it for the fourth time, I said it will be in Jacksonville, Florida. And I opened my fourth and um, last location in Jacksonville. And so that's kind of my path. Uh, I got to see global engineering. I got to see technology, especially through a cultural lens. And then as I came back to the US and started my own firm, I got to figure out how I wanted to do it. And so what what drove you to this kind of technology? Really, it, we hear a lot of buzzwords, right? It's like robotics, automation, innovation, AI, but we may just hear it. You're actually doing it and using it. So how does that evolve? Super. I, w I wish it was all my idea, but it's not. It was my, I had a couple early customers that were just big champions of trying to do something futuristic. And they just needed a small enough, hungry enough firm that would go out there and try and do it. So we had the benefit of doing a lot of first of a kinds in the industry around robotics and the connection between AI and robotics. And that was really driven by our customers giving us a challenge. And then we had the good fortune of, of building a great team and being able to execute on that challenge. So I also know that given your own global experience and work experience in all those different cultures, different places, you have actually focused very much on bringing all that diversity into the company. And I would assume that that gives you amazing and various perspectives across genders, age, ethnicities, and leadership potential. Tell us, how does it work inside the organization? Well, it is it is very global and it is very uh, what we would call diverse in standard corporate speak. But for our business, it's just the way we think. Um, so the first is, I would say the number one thing is one of the biggest hidden potentials in the STEM field, which is the, the parent of engineering, is empowering women, especially women around maternity events and early in their careers. I think still today, females feel glass ceilings and there's certain times in their flow of life they might feel marginalized. So we've really sought to unlock that. And that is a strategic recruiting advantage for us is that, especially if you're a mother that is pregnant or has young kids, we're creating ways that you can do great work and um, have a great family balance. Um, the next is we we take Gen Zs and we take boomers and we just mix them together. And we treat we don't have titles inside of our company. You might see some externally for uh, client facing purposes, but inside the company, we sit all around the table together as equals and peers and we value young ideas versus experienced ideas. Um, so that's one. And then finally, the company is led by millennials. Um, 
we're uh, the whole leadership of the company is millennials. We are certified as a DBE, a disadvantaged business. And we're overrepresented with, you know, ethnic minorities and females in our company. All of that makes us stronger and it gives us more resiliency at the uh, ideas table. And how much of this is, is remote? I mean, how many of your team are actually in person versus how many are around the world in all those global places? It's totally remote. Um, the majority of our team is located in the United States. Our two biggest hubs are in Jacksonville, Florida and Denver, Colorado. Um, we do have team members contributing from Malaysia. We have team members contributing from South America. Um, so we give those people a chance to opt in. But there's a time zone effect where if you want to reach me, it needs to be more or less around my family life cycle. So we do have a bias towards Eastern time zone and mountain time zone. OK, but you're making it work. And I feel like that's, you know, that's a little bit of what happened here for us on Good with Good Day. Right. You know, COVID forced us to go remote. Mm, and really. when when you can open up the world as your as your audience and also as your guest list, you're talking to me from Jacksonville, Florida, and and we're the richer for it. So I think what you're doing overall with the whole and taking advantage of everything that's available to you today. And I know that you're working on some giant corporate projects. What can you tell us? What can you share? Well, what I can tell you is there's a big reshoring of manufacturing coming to America. Um, and it's not so much that we're bringing back overseas factories to here. It's, it's more that corporations are making the decisions to place their next investment here when in years past they would have looked overseas. Um, so there's a reshoring. Manufacturing is outpacing the economy in terms of growth. We are right in the middle of that. It touches supply chain. It touches distribution and e-commerce. And um, so that's the first thing I can tell you. The next is that the demographics are changing in the workforce, and we're not going to have the same type of manual labor, factory worker, forklift driver type positions in the future. Um, the younger generation that's coming in won't be working the same. And so uh, corporations have to adopt, adapt, and we help them do that with technology. Uh, that's where we use autonomous robotics. We use collaborative robotics, driverless vehicles. All of those things help modernize a workforce so that uh, younger folks view manufacturing as a career choice. So I know that you're working with the Jacksonville Mass Transit. Can you share a little bit about what that looks like? Yeah, that, that was a very interesting um, assignment. Um, in 2017, I was asked to be uh, staff member number one of a new automation department in Jacksonville, Florida, that was going to automate the city's mass transit and do, do so with autonomous technology. Um, we started, it was, uh, I, they gave me a PowerPoint template and a desk. That's all I got. And then <laughs> we were very fortunate that we did create a very futuristic vision that seemed achievable for governments. And um, in 2018, the US Department of Transportation selected Jacksonville as the first sponsored driverless city. That set the wheels in motion. The state of Florida got behind it, the city of Jacksonville got behind it. And now in the, the new presidential administration, they continue to support it. So it's created a strong alliance of, of federal, state and local. And then also P3 where private companies are eager to participate in a public sector innovation project. That's incredible. And yes, I think, you know, it's a great, it's a great example of what is happening around the country in terms of rebuilding and bringing, bringing manufacturing and the infrastructure pieces back. That's, it's so exciting. And also you did some amazing work with the Mayo Clinic. Can you talk about that one? Well, Mayo just about two weeks ago went public with a automation system they have installed to help nurses. Uh, one of the biggest labor shortages in the um, hospital is nurses. And what I tell people is if Mayo Clinic's having trouble recruiting, they're all having trouble recruiting. Um, it's a personal story for me because my mother retired recently as a hospital nurse of 40 years. And um, so when I had the chance to influence the way Mayo Clinic would implement robotics, I jumped at it and I said, I'm making up for what my mother went through for all those years. So the, the long and short is, if we can keep a nurse near the patient bedside, focusing on care, and the things that that nurse may need 
magically show up at the doorway, then the nurse isn't losing time with the patient and then going to find things and fetch things that might be required for the care. All those items are arriving at the patient door and the nurse is able to get more care done and create better patient outcomes. And so we're, we're excited about this. We wanna see more energetic nurses and we're optimistic that if, if this system uh, goes off as it's promising to, then nurses around the country will be saying, hey, me next, you know, wh where's my robotic system? So as you're talking, I'm envisioning R2-D2 showing up at the doorway, holding a tray of bandages and maybe IV fluids and a, uh, a bedpan. Is, is that the image that I should have? Well, well you're <laughs> hired. First off, you're hired. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it's a little bit more industrial than that, as we started talking about manufacturing and then also moving people through autonomous transit. Our big uh, skill set is that we cross pollinate. So we take what one industry has and we take what another industry has and we find a way to, to merge those so you have the best of both. So it's a little more industrial looking. It's still very clean. It's still very friendly. Um, we're getting very positive reactions in our surveys to both nurses and patients. Um, but it's it's also got a, a job to do. So instead of one tray, our robot may have eight trays. And so we'll be able to service eight rooms on one route. Got it. And is the robot going to be delivering my meals? It will be. Uh, not currently. You know, it's crawl, walk, run. Okay. Uh, but I do think in the future that it's low-hanging fruit. The meals uh, should be coming. Um, certain Certain items like medication should be coming surgery kits are already being delivered. Um, so I think it's just a matter of time before you see more and more things transport themselves automatically in a hospital and the staff focuses on care. That's incredible. Now you are also um, coming upon, at least I've, I've heard word that you've got a really ambitious project coming up. So I lived in New York City for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the visions that comes back to me is that when it would snow, Two things. Either we would cross-country ski down Broadway because you, you couldn't get the plows out fast enough to move the snow, or I would have to park in New Jersey because there was no place to park in Manhattan for a number of weeks until all the mountains of snow cleared. Hmm. But you have a project coming up that's going to change the function of these uh, snow removal. That's just my vision of it, but I know that the whole country has a much bigger plan that's right. Tell us a little bit about this new partnership, this new project. Yeah, we, we are excited to announce we formed a joint venture with a leading snow removal company from Idaho. That company is called Kodiak America. Our new venture is called Kodiak Technologies. And what we're doing is we're taking tried and true diesel driven uh, snow removal equipment and we're electrifying it. So we're coming out with two models currently, a fully electric model and a diesel hybrid model. Um, we also have plans in the works for a hydrogen hybrid model and also alternative fuels such as compressed natural gas. So what the, the purpose of this vehicle is to take electrification to a space that is underserved right now, which is municipalities and airports. Mm -hmm. And so once we can get those cities operating with high quality, heavy duty, robust, electrified equipment, then they can start to spread out and do more and more equipment. And what you've seen is that as these uh, governments have tried to do it, there's been a, it's been spotty, it's been hit and miss. There's been some success and a lot of failure. And part of it is if you don't start right, the journey is not gonna end right. So our job as we see it is to help these governments start on a solid footing with high quality technology and a good strategy around charging and fleet management. And then they'll be able to expand in the future. So what's the time frame? When should we be looking for this? the next snow season. So I know in some parts of the country, it feels like we'll never get out of this current snow season, uh, but we're gonna be building our vehicle all summer long, and then we'll be testing it in the fall. We will be ready to rock and roll come January of 25, and we will actually demonstrate our technology on airport properties. And we think that's kind of the most critical because when it snows at an airport, everybody loses, right? And so we wanna be able to keep the America's airports open, even in the worst winter conditions, land the planes, get the passengers off and get the next folks on their way. Amazing. It's just so much exciting work coming out. And Matthew, where can our viewers learn more? Where can they go to see what you guys are up to? 
Well, we spend a lot of time on our website. So changrobotics.ai. You can also find me, uh, Matthew Chang on LinkedIn. I'm very active there and see our company's activity there. Um, and uh, of course, we're also out in the community. So the communities that we're in, we do our best to be engaged and serve in different ways. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing with us. It's been a joy to have you and I'll look forward to having you back for an update. Thanks, Lauren. And we'll be right back.